to hear some truth. If you if you don't want to hear the truth, you know, I don't know. Watch, you know, watch, watch. You know, go turn on CNN. If you want the truth here on what you're about to enter and the truth about our economy, you're about to hear it from one of the uh, smartest guys, uh, been around and successful for a very long time, Jim Rogers. He's the author of a new book called Street Smarts, Adventures on the Road and in the Market. Um, uh, Paul Krugman says, uh, Jim Rogers makes my head hurt. So please, Jim, <laughs> keep it up. Um, the uh, You know, one reason I did the book was so I could put that on the cover. <laughs> that I made Paul Krugman's head hurt. I wanted the I world to know. That. I just love that. I love that. Okay. Wait a minute, Glenn, this is, is this television? There I am. Yeah, that's television. Well, let me yeah, put on, on my tie, for God's sakes. You don't need to wear a tie, Jim. It's, 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 you don't I need thought to it wear was radio. It, it is, is radio. It is it's radio. radio and television. Oh, okay, go ahead. Carry on. I'm sorry. You don't need on. to wear a tie. I know I don't. Well, you, I'm trying to bring a little class to this group. Oh, it's you know, impossible. It's... <laughs> so anyway, so Jim, you're going to be on television with me tonight at uh, 5 o'clock, and um, we're going to go over uh, you know, the ideas uh, that the that – Really, quite honestly, the president and many in the GOP are just going right along with it. And uh, we just had Rand Paul on who, you know, he's he's got, I think, a plan that would actually might work at this point. Are we past the point of no return? Uh, yes, because the debt is physically impossible to pay off. We are the largest debtor nation in the history of the world, in the history of the world, not just the largest debtor nation in the world, but in world history. And if you take in the off-balance sheet, Glenn, it's physically impossible to pay it off. If every paid, everybody paid 100% of their t earnings as taxes, we still couldn't pay it off. I actually uh, I talked to some banker friends of mine who are, you know, strangely, you know, like, you know, hey, well, we can do that. And they don't notice the slide that they're in, you know. I've talked to them for 10 years, and, they, and it's always, well, that's not going to happen. Yes, it is. No, it's not going to happen. They never do that. And they just keep sliding down. The last conversation I had with one of them, was they said, Glenn, it's not so bad. And listen to this. It's not so bad. How do you believe it's not so bad? We still have the national parks. <laughs> so we're going to sell the national Sell the national parks. You know, we could do, we could sell Santa Claus. We could sell the North Pole, too. <laughs> <laughs> we could occupy the North Pole, sell the North it's Pole. It's crazy talk. It's crazy talk. I know. It's insane. Okay, I, so, so wait a minute. So, so how does this... How does this go from here what are the road signs that we should look at and you know people like you you know you can get on your plane and you can go to singapore i can't go to singapore um and most people can't go to singapore um and quite honestly if the if america goes away i don't know how lucky you are in singapore who's gonna you know who's who's policing anything in the world and or providing stability except dictators well, there are people in the world who don't think that America's doing a good job of policing the world. Oh, no, right we suck now. at it. No, 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 <laughs> I, I know. Say, I, we you, suck at it. If but that's at least, your ideal, you've got problems. Right, right, right. But at least there is some stability. You know, there's still some question on uh, who wins, who fails here. At least in the minds of of the average person, the average bad guy, there's still some. You know, I think they know we're at the edge, and just a little push will push us over, and then the world changes. Well, of course the world changes. This is the world changed when the U.K., you know, after the First World War, the U.K. was the richest, most powerful country in the world. There was no number two. They were bankrupt three generations later. Within one generation, there was economic chaos because it was, it was corroded from within. We're on the same path. There's no way we can pay. You know, Glenn, right now, interest rates are zero percent. In America, the, cent the central bank is destroying the people who save and invest. You know all the people you know who saved their money, mm -hmm. who didn't get six houses, who didn't have, make no down payments on their property, etc. They're being destroyed now. That whole class of people who saved and invested and did things right. So, Jim, what do they do? I mean, because you're talking to, I mean, you're right now, 8 million people, and they're listening. And out of that 8 million people, 1%, uh, 2%, we probably have 5% of this audience, um, is is in a class where they can actually, they, they, you know, they can maneuver and they've got a lot of money. Most people are living right at the edge. What does the person do who has saved their whole life? You know, I just read something that said, if you're a saver, you lose. So really the best thing to do is just pile up debt. 
I'm like, okay, that doesn't sound good either. That's not good for a society. They're they're, they're safe. You know what they're doing? They're bailing out the people who did it the wrong way. Right. The people who did save, you're right, they're being destroyed. All of those people are getting so, zero on their earnings. So to bail, wait, Glenn, to bail out the people who did it wrong. So let's take my parents, my uh, my in-laws, um, just retired. He still has his small business. He's an insurance agent. They have saved their whole life. She's got pension. They've got 401k. What are they supposed to do with it? What do they do? Well, Mr. Obama last night said everything is great. <laughs> <laughs> they don't believe him, and neither Does, do I, neither don't do you. Don't your in-laws know what Mr. Obama said? <laughs> I know. He said that everything is great, and the middle class is on the way back, and everything is fine now. I mean, the man is delusional. I was really afraid when I saw that. The only reason I watched, I wouldn't watch that stuff except I was coming here to be with you. And I oh, I didn't you, watch it. So you, oh, well, I wouldn't have watched it either. I don't no, waste my time. I, it's a total waste. I know what he's going to say, and I, I know, know what the response is going to be. But so. it's delusional. It was frightening. I mean, I haven't, you know, I, I don't live in the U.S. anymore. I, it was frightening. I'm still a taxpayer, so I, I have to wa- know something about what's going on. But he was totally, del- I don't know if he believed it or if he was just lying. I don't really care at this point. I, I mean, he's either, he's either the best liar or he is completely delusional. I, I don't know which it is, but it does. It doesn't matter. Uh, but there's a whole honestly. crowd of good liars up right. there in Washington. Right. So, but again, let me go back to the question: What does the average person do to be able to survive, Jim? Well, that's an extremely good question, and everybody in America right now, is, at least the people who saved for the future, are facing that question right now. The only thing I can urge them to do is, like your your in law, in laws, put their money back into their own business. That's at least what they know. Don't go putting your money into some hot tips you hear from a guy on radio or TV. Certainly don't listen to uh, the government mm-hmm. telling you what to do. Just stay with what you know. It's a very perilous times. The government is not on your, not on your side if you're saving and investing. Okay, so the, the idea when you say invest in your business, I tried to explain, and, and I, you'll probably be able to explain this um, better than I can. I've tried to explain that. I think the stock market is going to continue to go up because it, it's meaningless and it's paper. And the, the cheaper the money is, et cetera, et cetera, that paper will go up and up and up. And so you'll read this and say two things. One, we're getting better because look at the stock market. We have this d- delusion of that. That means something. But as that money is going up in your 401k and you're seeing, well, I'm, I'm making more, the value of when you turn that paper in is going down so yes it might be worth a thousand dollars but your buying power once you turn that money in your buying power is maybe eight hundred dollars when everybody listening to this knows that prices are going up go to the grocery store education entertainment anything prices health care oh my gosh prices are going up the government says they're not going up but you'll make a very good point it could say you have twenty thousand dollars but the $20,000 is worth less and less and less because they're debasing the currency. It's an active policy in Washington. The head of the central bank, head of the Federal Reserve in America, has a de- dedicated policy to debase the currency. This is not good for you, me, or anybody in America, except for some, a few people in Washington and a few people on Wall Street. I've been urging people to become as self-reliant as they possibly can, to take care of their, make sure that they... Um, they understand how fragile the food, the supply lines are, um, to understand that farming is going to become extraordinarily important again, um, to know that the, any way you can get off the grid and not be dependent on power from somebody else is very important. Anything you can do to make yourself free, independent as possible. Well, you are doing a good deed for many people if they listen to you because there are going to be many breakdowns like that. We're going to have serious food shortages, in, not just in America, but in the world coming up. And by the way, as an aside, farming is going to be one of the great professions of the next 10, 20, 30 years. You should become a farmer. You, I am. <laughs> I am. You ha- are? Oh, I am. I have, a, I have, a, uh, I have cattle and, uh, and a farm uh, out west. And I have cattle here as well. well I will tell you, I, when I speak to universities and students, I tell them all they should be studying agriculture. They don't want to do it. They all want to get MBAs. But it's a terrible mistake. They should be studying agriculture. Nobody, here's what, and you said this to me a couple of years ago, and it really sat with me. I, I've thought about it. In fact, I quoted you just the other day with, in a group of friends that, um, that, that farming, nobody is studying it. 
And nobody wants to do that job. And it's not just here. It's around the entire world. And so farming has become a lost art. The average age of farmers in America is 58. In Japan, it's 66. In Canada, it's the oldest in recorded history. In Australia, it's 58. In 10 years, those guys will be 68 if they're still alive. Somebody's got to go into the fields. More people in America study public relations than study agriculture. We don't have any farmers coming Even up. if you do study, um, uh, you know, farming or whatever, I don't even know what they would call it now, but it becomes about environmental studies. Yeah, that's it's, it's, not, it's not even about how to grow things. It's how to get man out of touching the earth. Well, that's, that's true, too. But some of the courses, if you go down to Texas A&M, I'm sure they, they show you oh, how yeah, to. Oh, no, no, Texas, no, Texas A&M, they'll, you know, here in Texas, they'll. Uh, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll teach you something. I suspect at Auburn they teach you to plow, you know, and to plant and to fertilize. There's some schools left that teach you the proper thing, but not many because there are only 10,000 students, 10,000 study agriculture, 200,000 get MBAs. That's the, that's so the graduate. So if you wanted to, if, if you were, um, if you had a 15-year-old and they, were, and they were planning their future, you would say to them what? I would tell her to go into the fields, and if she likes the fields or he likes the fields, to become a farmer. Because that's going. To, the farmers are going to be driving the Lamborghinis. The farmers are going to be rich. We don't have any farm. What more do you need to know? There's no competition. You know, in, in stockbroking and finance, there are lots of competition. 200,000 MBAs every year, Glenn, every year. What no makes way. you believe, though, that um, farmers would be able to keep their land? I mean, if things break down... This government, I mean, you watched him last night. He's already saying, you know, you don't do the environmental study. I'm going to do it for you. I'll just executive order. I mean, he's going around the Constitution. He's going around everything. So what makes you think that farmers would be able to keep their land? Well, it's certainly not the land of the free that it used to be. You know, they, there's no more habeas corpus. They, can, they, they don't have to have a search warrant anymore to go into your house or to your bank account or it's crazy. Any, anything. I mean, no, it's, it's just startling. When did you see this coming, Jim? Well, I've seen it come. I've, you've seen it coming for a while. I've seen it coming for a while. But I, I'm stunned at how, how rapidly it's happened. I Are guess you stunned it, by, because you're watching it from afar. Are you stunned by how, would you have thought that the American people would have been a little more up in arms? I am, I cannot believe that when the, when the Supreme Court said, yes, you can go into somebody's house without a search warrant. That people didn't go out into the streets and say, what are you talking about? This is America. You can't just walk into my house, even if you're the police. They can, Glenn. Now they can walk into your house, the police or anybody, anybody from the government. They can do all sorts of things now. You know, if they don't like you, they can drop a drone right here on this building. Oh, they, can, I, they can execute you. Well, why do you think I'm painting the building to look like a farm? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, painting, I'm putting little big plastic cows on top of the building, so that drone is like, what happened to that building? <laughs> well, this is back, the to the, back to the teenagers. Though. If the teenagers like agriculture, planning, that sort of thing, I cannot tell you. I, I urge them to go and become farmers. That's good. They're going to be so rich. There's so many opportunities. Wall Street's going to be a backwater again. Good. <laughs> Good. <laughs> well, I don't, it's, I'm not here to say whether it's good or bad. I'm just I'm at telling you facts. Facts are agriculture is going to be extremely exciting. Finance is going to be a, a wasteland. Okay. Um, tonight, we'll have more with uh, Jim Rogers, and uh, he's got a new book out, Street Smarts, Adventures on the Road and in the Markets. What I like about Jim is he's, he, he, he's, he's not just a numbers guy. He puts life experience together, and, and he understands culture, and uh, he understands people. And I think that's why he is um, so far ahead of everybody else. And honestly, one of the very few that deserve to be listened to um, because he actually will tell you the truth. I've had, I've had one of these financial guys actually tell me, Jim, um, we have a responsibility to not tell people the truth. Oh. Because oh. they'll panic. And I said, to that, I mean, you, you had to have talked to some of these people in private conversations where they have said sim- similar things like, Look, Jim, but you can't say these things. <laughs> I've certainly been told I can't say these things. Yeah. Yes, I've certainly been, I mean, it's been told that. But it's, but it's the truth. I mean, you've you got to tell people the truth. I cannot believe that somebody would say to you out loud that you've got to tell people lies. Oh, no. no. For their own good? Yeah, for you their sound own good. like You sound like Washington. You sound like Mr. Obama. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, uh, Jim will be joining us uh, tonight at 5 o'clock. You don't want to miss it. 
Uh, again, the name of the book is uh, Street Smarts by Jim Rogers. Worth the read. Are you ready? Do you have what it takes to not only survive hard times, but also thrive in them? In times like these, the most valuable currency we have is food and food reserves. It is more precious than gold, oil, and cash. Food is our greatest dependency, because when you're hungry, nothing else matters. You know it, and I know it. You can't control earthquakes, floods, or the real estate meltdown, but if you have food, you have personal solutions to how these things affect you. Register right here, right now, and order your six free meals so you can truly discover what the currency of the future and your freedom tastes like.